talking with the experts. In episode 555, discover the 12 chains holding you back from success with Philip Ride. Learn how to break free and achieve your goals. In the book, yes, there are 12 chains and, and sort of the, the chains champion framework. I split them out into three levels. So the chains at level one are self-directed actions, the things that we have control over. So who we spend our time with and the relationships, how we spend our time in the areas of convenience. Second level, external influences. And then the third level, mental images. So fear is a chain at level three, because a lot of the time we create mental images of the worst case scenarios, even though they are very unlikely to happen. And we let that hold us back. And I, I, again, I've been guilty of this, which is why I recognized it. And I was like, okay, there are things I need to do differently here. I had that fear for skydiving for such a long time that my parachute wasn't going to open and I was going to plummet to the earth and I was going to go splat. And that would be right. Well, that's the end of that. Maybe I won't do that activity, but I pushed myself through and I went skydiving because there, you know, there was a, a friends within the group who was doing it for their birthday. She was like, yeah, you know, come and join us. Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, I'm Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com.au. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. Talking with the Experts is all about business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to Philip Ride. And Philip has been an entrepreneur since he was about 16 and for the past 22 years has been working in the tech and video game industries but his life changed in 2020 when he broke his neck playing rugby. He was unable to afford the surgery um, and he left his neck untreated in the hope that it would heal itself naturally. This was quickly followed by COVID, lockdowns and struggling to keep his business going with 50% disappearing when events were cancelled and clients chose not to invest in new campaigns and we all know that feeling. Philip started his own personal development journey in the spring of 2021 and since then he has made some major changes in his life including writing and publishing two books, giving up alcohol, launching a podcast, redesigning his business and creating the 12 chains and chains to champion frameworks to help people own, um, uncover and break the chains that he himself has worked through including fear, perception, relationships, and knowledge. Philip, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for joining us on Talking With The Experts, and I'm really interested to learn about your 12 chains. Yeah, thank you, Rose. It's great to be here. And absolutely 12 chains, the, the hidden things in life that hold us back that we often don't even realise. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, um, you know, tell us a little bit, I mean, uh, Despite the, the the breaking of your neck, which, you know, we talked a little bit about before we came on air, um, you know, th the healing of that was, you know, phenomenal and, and your recovery has been in, incredible. You know, tell me how you arrived from, you know, working in the te tech and video industry that you now are doing this personal development. Yeah, it's, I think it's all part of the, the journey. So one of the... Yes, the challenges with my neck. I didn't know it was broken for seven weeks. So the contacts and the impact when I was playing rugby, so it was, the, it was pretty much the last minute of the game. So we'd already lost, but I was still committed to doing my roles. It's like, yeah, well, that was a silly decision, clearly. Um, but yes, my neck muscles, my shoulder muscles, they all stiffened up. Obviously, sometimes your body tries to protect itself so you know it goes into spasm or it you know it shuts things down so for me when that happened I just thought oh, I've just done like a really hard gym session or it's because of the contact and my muscles are you know I've pulled those they've gone stiff that's okay so I had physio for seven weeks 
And then the physio was like, this is not doing anything. There's, there's no release. There's no, you know, I still can't really do anything with your muscles to loosen them off or, or manipulate them. So it's like, maybe you should go and get some scans. And that's when I found out that yes, the C5, C6 vertebra, which is at the, the bottom of the neck had a break in it. And it was six hours worth of surgery that was suggested and I couldn't afford it. So it was that tough decision of, okay, I'm going to walk out of here. I'm going to put faith in my body to heal itself and just have to see what happens. And because I'd wasted those seven weeks, that's when, you know, the lockdowns started to happen here in Dubai. So that's sort of February, March time, the rest of the world took a little bit longer to implement certain things, but yeah, for here in Dubai, it was, it's pretty early. So again, it was that the hospitals were shutting down anyway. So even if I did have the surgery, I don't know what support and care I would have received because the priority may have been elsewhere. So it's just like, you know what, I'm just going to take a step back. I'm going to walk out of here and we'll see what happens. And thankfully, yeah, it has healed. I got another set of scans 18 months afterwards and different consultants, but he tried to do some research. So he was, a again, a specialist sort of spinal consultant. He was like, I've not seen anything like this. Most people wait three weeks and then get surgery. Nobody's silly enough to wait seven weeks before getting scans and then not have surgery. So to see that you've got range of movement, you've got strength, and that your body has created new bone around the break, amazing. Congratulations, go and live your life. Um, so yeah, it, it was it was an interesting period because of the COVID lockdowns as well of trying to keep the business going. So it's two things there running side by side for me is it's like, where well, I put faith in my body and just see what happens and hope for the best. And I've got to try and keep my business going and hope for the best. So that that faith and just saying, okay, this is the journey I'm on. I have to wait and see what happens. But all of that's together because my business at that time was still doing consultancy work, strategy, live events, marketing campaigns in that industry is like, okay, now, now it's time for a change that, you know, there's, there's something bigger here. And one of the key questions that I got asked on one of my first personal development courses was what impact and contribution have you made? What's going to be said at your funeral? And given that that could have been the outcome for the injury on the pitch, if that had been any worse, it's like, yeah, maybe I need to start making some changes here. Maybe I need to think differently, think about how I can use my skills and experience to help people. Absolutely. And, and, you know, Having a broken neck is no easy easy thing. My father broke his neck. He fell off a, a power station. He was doing some welding and fell off. I don't know, it was 40 feet and only broke he broke his neck, but he didn't find out for months later. And um, you know, honestly, so he, he didn't have surgery either. Um it it had sort of repaired itself. But I think it ha a lot of it has to do with mindset and um and I think because you were fit and healthy in the first place, I think that had a lot of, of uh of something to do with, you know, your healing process. But, you know, personal development, it, it, it teaching other people um, using personal development can be quite a tricky process. And so what led you to, you know, want to help others in this journey? I think that that key question that I got asked and coaching has almost been a byproduct so if I think about that question of impact and contribution, my first thought was, yeah, what knowledge and skills and experience have I got that I can share with people? You know, what can I potentially create and package up and make available? So, you know, the first thing was actually helping parents. So my partner is a teacher and she needed a, a maths lesson for her students. And we were like, mm, what can we do? we have these conversations over dinner sometimes of you know what she's got coming up and, and what she's working on with the students and they were like ah oh, yeah okay they all like a particular video game so maybe we create a lesson based on that game she was like oh i'm not sure about that i'm not sure whether they'll they'll buy into it and and engage with it but she took the plunge 30 minutes later we had that plan next day i got a message all the students loved it all on task all super engaged the atmosphere in the classroom was great so it's like okay, maybe here's a way that I can use that knowledge and experience, the stuff that I've been doing for years in the video games industry. So that was the first part. And it was again using that knowledge and experience to package things up. So creating courses, you know, interviewing parents and child psychologists, which led to the first book. Uh, so it's about managing screen time, and online safety, and how to use 
popular video games to improve math skills for sort of the, the five to 12 year old age bracket. So it wasn't sort of coaching per se, it was more that knowledge and experience, but that process led to then the second book because I was writing slides for an online training that I did for parents. So I did sort of four days of online training, created a slide, had 12 boxes on it. Those boxes were things that impact parents that they don't necessarily realize when it comes to screen time and online safety and devices and tech in general. One of those boxes was relationships. And you can probably see where this is going from the intro. Yeah, yeah. Those 12 boxes actually then became the 12 chains because I looked at it and went, this is not just about screen time and tech. This is actually about life. So that then took me in a different direction because um, I recognized the things that I had done, the things, the changes that I'd made, the challenges that I'd overcome. And like, yeah, I can see myself in a number of these boxes or the things that I've done, like, oh, relationships. In the past, I fired my biggest client because the relationship was not a positive one. So it's like, okay, I've been through that situation. So that led to the second book, which is where the coaching then comes in because it's like, okay, I now have... 12 chains and the change champion frameworks is about sharing those to help others uncover some of the things that are holding them back so that they can find more freedom, whether that is in life, whether it's in business. And so that's, I guess, where the coaching has come from. It wasn't the original thought. It was more about how can I share that knowledge and experience? I'm now doing that. It's just that the vehicle for that is starting to also be coaching. Interesting, con interesting journey, I, I guess, um, from, you know, doing what you're doing, but it sort of melds in together, you know, d from what you were doing um, and only take, took a little bit of a tweak to get to where you are now. So it wasn't, you know, a massive gape in the middle that um, you couldn't sort of just, you know, change direction totally because you were just doing what you were doing all along, but just in a different way. Yeah. Philip, I'd like to talk about the 12 chains and, and why they hold us back from success. Absolutely. Holding us back from success. Great question. And I think it's like a lot of things in life. We don't know what we don't know. And so as I looked at, at the model, again, it became clear to me, yes, these are situations or things in my life that I was working through, I had worked through, or I still needed to address, which means that there are probably people in the same situation and if we can uncover them then it means we can start to make changes but if we don't know about them we just think that's just the way life is and that's often the thing that I've said myself and it's just that's just what happens that's just how it goes you know what can we do about it well actually yeah there are things we can do about it but it starts with being able to uncover the cause of those situations and then be able to take steps to change so you know, if we take the relationship one, because I've mentioned it already, take people through a simple exercise. Rate all of your relationships on a scale of one to 10. If there are six or less, that means you think that there's something there that is not positive for you. That's you know, maybe a relationship that's toxic or is draining you. You don't like spending much time with that person. Maybe that's somebody you need to start moving away from, even if it's work colleagues, even if it's your clients, as I did. And it's like, that's clearly not contributing to you being in a positive state. So maybe there's something that you need to change there. So a lot of the, the chains do have related exercises to help people uncover them and say, ah, oh, yeah, I can, I can see what you're getting at here. Right now that I've identified it, I can start to make some changes. And what are some of the other, uh, you know, chains that, that are holding us back that, you know, relationships really is, is a huge one, I know. But, you know, could you, um, you know, pr perhaps share with us what some of the other 12 chains are? Yeah, absolutely. Convenience. We live in a world that is 24-7, on demands. You know, we can get deliveries in 15 minutes and we can just, you know, watch Netflix and suddenly it will roll into the next episode without us even pressing a button. It's like, that is convenience. And it holds us back because it's been designed in a way where we don't have to think. And a lot of the time we don't have to take an action, which means things happen around us without us necessarily being conscious of it. And again, I've been guilty of this. You know, I get into a good series on Netflix and I'm like, okay, maybe I want to watch the next one because it's I want to see what happens next. But it's like, 
I also need to sometimes take that step back and be like, that's 45 minutes I could use for something else. Certainly if I'm trying to build a business, I have to do that way. If it's like, okay, what could I use that time for instead? So convenience is a chain that holds us back because often we fall into that trap because it's easy. But if we have a vision for our life, the question is, well, is that actually going to move me forward towards that vision for my life? And that's where in my book, the first exercise is create that vision for your life. Because once you have that, and it's called the what's the tale of your life exercise. Um, people put things into to four quadrants in that, uh, which is what the, the word tale is about. Because once you have that vision, it becomes easier to say, okay, is what I'm doing, who I'm talking to, where I'm going, how I'm spending my, you know, all of these things. It's like, are those things moving me forward? Simple yes or no. And if the answer is no, then it's like, okay, am I, am I accepting that? Am I still going to go with it, even though I know it's not helping me? Or am I going to take that step back and say, okay, now it's time to do something different. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, if you don't know where you are in your life, uh, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to move forward, you know, you just sort of muddle along and and think, you know, everything's going all right. But in the end, really, you're only, you're only doing yourself a disservice by not knowing where you are on your track of life. Absolutely. So, yeah, convenience is a big one. Um, fear. Mm. Fear, fear is, is an huge interesting one. It's huge. And the way that I position it, so if I take a step back, in the book, yes, there are 12 chains and, and sort of the, the chain to champion framework. I split them out into three levels. So the chains at level one are self-directed actions, the things that we have control over. So who we spend our time with and the relationships, how we spend our time in the areas of convenience. Second level, external influences. And then the third level, mental images. So fear is a chain at level three. Because a lot of the time, we create mental images of the worst case scenarios, even though they are very unlikely to happen. And we let that hold us back. And I, I, again, I've been guilty of this, which is why I recognized it. And I was like, okay, there are things I need to do differently here. I had that fear for skydiving for such a long time that my parachute wasn't going to open and I was going to plummet to the earth and I was going to go splat. And that would be, right, well, that's the end of that. Maybe I won't do that activity. But I pushed myself through and I went skydiving because there, you know, there was a a friend within the group who was doing it for their birthday. She was like, yeah, you know, come and join us. Okay, maybe I'll do it. I'll take that plunge, see what happens. <clears throat> One of the most magical experiences over the palm in Dubai, just so peaceful and quiet, just being able to look at all the sights and the scenery. And although I now can't do it or I'm, it's suggested I don't do it because of the neck injury, that is a memory that will stay with me forever. But if I'd continued with that fear and that image in my head that I had created, I would never have done that skydive. Yeah, I've got the same fear of skydiving. I'm afraid of heights. And so, um, you know, I think that the fear of being up so high is like, I don't know how I'd handle it, but, you know, it's something that I've always wanted to do. But I understand what you're saying. It's fear is, is a a great detriment to us all. We all have a fear of something in our life that um, that holds us back from doing and accomplishing, you know, all the things that we can. Yeah. You know, public speaking is regarded as, but if we think about public speaking, it's not the speaking action that we're worried about. It's the response from the audience. Yeah. And the images that we get of people laughing at us or people falling asleep or, you know, things like that, or as falling up the stairs as we walk on stage, all of those things that we create as mental images, but they are not likely to happen. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah, very, very true, Philip, very true. Yeah, tell me about the importance of um, the value ladder for business building because, you know, we a lot of us don't, um, you know, we just plow ahead and we just do our thing and, and, you know, splat the mud against the wall and hope for the best. But, you know, I have heard other people talk about this value ladder and I'd like your your uh, your take on that. Absolutely. So this is something that I became more familiar with as I started making changes to my business, you know, doing the personal developments and thinking about, okay, I've almost been given a second chance here. I've been asked that tough question of impact and contribution. So 
if I'm thinking about impact and contribution, there's still only one of me. So what can I do? How can I package that knowledge and that experience? What can I offer? And so learning about the value ladder for me was great because it enabled me to think of what can I offer at different stages of a journey? So if we think about customers, some people, you know, coaching is great because it's like somebody may want one-to-one -one access to you and they're willing to pay for that. And that may be at the top of your value ladder. Other people may just want to consume some of the content that you've got, get the course or the book and pay a lot less. So you can build a structure that says, okay, depending on where somebody is in their journey or the type of things that you want to make available to them, you can build that in a way where it's like, okay, maybe it's different formats and, and media, maybe it's different price points. So it, it's about creating a structure for the business that says, okay, there's going to be some things that are going to be more expensive, maybe because it's, it's more time, it's more resources required. Other stuff, it may be more light touch, in which case you, you know, make it available to more people at a lower price point. So it's about thinking, from a business perspective, how do we want to structure the offering that we have so that, again, we can support more people at different stages, you know, again, whether that's based on stage of development or stages in the finances available to them. That's uh, yeah, uh, interesting. Um, now I'm thinking that uh, I guess the value for each of us is different. And so our ladder, our ladder would look different. So mine would look, look different from yours absolutely and uh, this is it it's, it can be tailored to pretty much any business so one of the great examples that i've seen for example is a dentist okay so maybe the bottom level layer is coming for a free checkup and then while you're here i'll talk to you about teeth whitening or you know a, a scale and polish and that's the next level up and it's a little bit more expensive and then maybe it is okay you know whitening and going and doing something else. And maybe then there's a, you know, there's another level up that says buy into a subscription. That means you can come in once a month. And it's like, you can still, you can build a structure based on the services that you have to offer. But yes, a lot of businesses will do it in different ways. It's just keeping in mind that there will be ways to build that structure so that, you know, your expensive stuff is at one end, your cheaper stuff is at the other. And then you can guide people through that depending on, you know, what makes sense for them. Absolutely. No, that makes a lot of sense. And, um, you know, I think that if if uh, we were to look at our businesses uh, in how we can add value to each of the steps along the way, um, I think a lot of us would probably look at our businesses a lot differently. Yeah. Yeah. So if I were to give you an example from my business, so I have my book, uh, second book, so Finally Find Freedom, which is the one about the 12 chains. So the value ladder for that, for example, would be, here's the book at the lowest level. Then there's a video course version. Okay, so that's the next step up. So what, somebody prefers video content rather than the written word. So it's the same content, just packaged in a different way. And then there'll be the live event versions. So that again, is a bit higher, a bit more expensive, come and experience it live. And then maybe if I choose to do it, there's group and there's one-to-one. -one. Again, so that is a structure based on delivery mechanisms for that content but the content is exactly the same and that's often yep. what we find within you know the coaching and consulting space yeah absolutely absolutely Philip tell me um where can uh, people find your books because they sound really interesting and I think um you know people should be aware where they can find them and and you know what's in it for them yeah absolutely so both are available on Amazon so the first book, uh, the one that was written about managing screen time, online safety, and improving math skills using video games is called Watch Us Play. And the second one is Finally Find Freedom. Um, that's about the 12 chains and has the exercise in it. So helping people understand those chains and uncover them in their lives. And then the four steps they can use to break those chains and, and find more freedom. Um, so yes, they're both available on Amazon. Either search for the book title or search for my name should bring them up. And then they're both available as ebooks and physical print copies. Yeah, if you want to find Philip anywhere else, you can find him on LinkedIn and Facebook and uh, on his website at Philip, which is P H I L I P, surname W R I D E dot com. And um, what can they find on your website, Philip? Just a bit more about me. So there's, there's links to 
podcasts that I have um, to some additional resources and things like that, talking about you know, the work that I do. So that journey, I'm now focusing on female coaches using the tech to support them. So that's an extension of you know what I've got with the 12 chain. So there's that mindset piece um, and you know, making changes in life. And then there's that more business focused piece of using my skills and experience to, to help others. So there's a couple of bits on there for that. And that's it. It's, you know, if people want to engage with me, there's options on there. You can contact me on social, pretty much on, on the different platforms. So just drop me a message. Um, there is also a uh, link, again, to more information about the 12 chains. So I actually recorded a three-episode mini podcast, which goes into a bit more detail about the chains and, and how to break them. So if somebody likes that audio, there's an option for them. Wonderful. And what about the three life secrets? Yeah, What's so three about? life secrets. That's that mini podcast. Ah, wonderful. Uh, so it's three episodes, about 50. Second episode is the three different levels of chain, which we've touched on. And then the third episode is the four steps to break free of a chain. So I've just positioned those as three life secrets because once you know them, obviously you can do things differently. Absolutely. Philip, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's, uh, I love learning about the chains. I think I might go and pop over to your website and have a bit bit more of a look and see if um, I can discover a little bit more about how I can break some of the chains that are holding me back. Yes. Thank you, Rose. It's been great to be here. Bye-bye for now. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time.